welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome once again to the WP Builds Podcast. You have reached episode number 293 entitled Understanding the Client's Training Needs. It was published on Thursday the 25th of August 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'll be joined in a few minutes by my good friend David Wormsley so that we can have our chat about this topic. But before then, if you enjoy the WP Builds podcast, why not check out our website, wpbuilds.com, all of the episodes you can find there, along with all of the other bits and pieces that we do. So, for example, we do a live show every Monday, 2 p.m. UK time. I'm joined typically by three other very nice WordPressers, and we chat about the WordPress news from that week. That show's called This Week in WordPress. If you want to keep updated with all of the things that we produce, head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe and you can join our email list find our twitter channel and youtube channel and so on and so forth a couple of other things the first thing to mention is that we have if you are fed up with twitter and facebook we've got a wordpress specific mastodon install now mastodon is a piece of open source software which kind of mimics the functionality of twitter so if you're into that and you'd like to just join a group where the conversation is primarily about wordpress it's very quiet at the moment i'll be honest but head over to wp builds dot social and that is a url wpbuilds.social and sign up and you never know we might be able to get the party going a little bit more we've also got a deals page i say it's a bit like black friday but every single day of the week because that's what it is searchable filterable list of wordpress deals which are permanently there go check it out if you're in the market for something this week the wp builds podcast is brought to you today by godaddy pro GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by going to go.me forward slash WP builds. Once more, that's go.me forward slash WP builds. And it is with sincere thanks that we thank them for helping us put on the WP Builds podcast. Okay, what are we talking about today? Well, at the top, I mentioned that the title was going to be Understanding the Client's Training Needs. So it is that. It's David Wormsley and I having a chat about this. We're into that stage in our WordPress business bootcamp where the actual build of the website is largely done. And we're all of the bits and pieces that might come after the fact. So this one is all about what are the training needs that a client has? How much do we put into this? Do we just hand over the site and say, there you go? Do we provide videos? Do we provide documentation? Do we do it on the fly so that we react when the client says, could you explain how this works? I've forgotten how to log in and so on. And there's an awful lot in this, and I hope that you enjoy it. Welcome to another in the Business Bootcamp series where we relearn everything we know about building WordPress sites and running a web design business from start to finish. We're on the first series of season four which is looking at training clients. And we're kicking the first one off with understanding the client's training needs. Nathan and I are taking contrasting approaches as we try and get our new businesses up and running and our first client site built. She's a new lawyer with no previous site. And Nathan, we'll just do a quick recap, shall we, as usual? Dead quick, yeah, okay. Um, My my premise is that I'm doing the traditional uh, approach. Some people might call that waterfall where I do a contract, do a proposal, get the get the sign, get the the sign off for that, build the site and yeah, hand it over and th- I guess today's episode would be what happens after that really. Yeah, indeed. And I'm agile where we're trying to get out a minimal viable website and we'll be constantly iterating on that based on behavior from users. So Great. Yeah, so this is key actually understanding clients. So actually our different approaches will um really determine, I guess, how we might go about it. But should we start with some basic assumptions about what we mean with this? All right. Yeah, you've you've made, a, as you always do, a a nice set of show notes. 
with the assumptions written there? Do you want to just read <laughs> yeah. through them? Yeah. So, well, the first one is, and this may not be true, is that given that we're offering people WordPress or CMS, presumably it's so they can manage their content because that's what it's for. But maybe that's a wrong assumption because perhaps some people are doing it because it's going to keep down the build costs with page builders or to make up for the skills that they don't have. Perhaps they're more of a visual designer than a developer. Um, so that's probably going to have a huge impact how you do your business, I would imagine. Yeah, um, I, I think one of the pieces in there also is the, the fact that it's a CMS. The client sometimes is beguiled by the idea that in the future they can do whatever they want with their website. So, you know, they might have to... They might have the ability to do bookings or add in a shop yeah. or something like that. But but yeah, I think that's fair enough. If they've got a CMS, a safe assumption that they're going to want to edit their own content, why not? Yeah, and I think that's, for me, this is why this is quite an interesting topic. We said this is going to be such a boring series, didn't we? But when we started talking about it, we realized how much has changed since when we did it, when clients were too cautious to want to go in and yep. get involved in the technical stuff. And we'd have to coax them in to today where they believe everything's possible with page builders and they expect to be able to just add to their sites anything with a simple plugin. So yeah. it's a completely changed environment from when we started. Yeah, um, and I also think that we've got to the point where almost everybody's online at some point during the day and when i started hardly anybody was you know yeah. really operating online you know maybe they'd have logged in to check emails but that would have been about it but everybody's really familiar with apps for this you know SaaS apps for everything so the idea that people are frightened to log in and do things i think is is, is gone especially as the generations get older, you know, the younger generation are just brought up on this. And so anybody, in our case, our lawyer, Miss A, it's very likely that she's been doing things online her whole life. Yeah, probably. And I think one thing that's changed as well with this is the fact that we are more likely these days to try and extend our relationship with clients. Once it used to be a build it, hand over the keys and off we go. Yep. Where now we're trying to provide some ongoing service in the form of hosting and care. Yep. So sometimes I think it's it's probably more likely to be in our interest to set expectations about you know, uh, going forward about what they can and can't do and That's understand right. them a bit better. Yeah. Yep. yep. And that training, uh, the one assumption is that training is up has never been probably utmost in our minds when we start a build process. No, no. And in fact, on some level, I kind of wonder how, because we've got the muscle memory of using WordPress forever, you kind of assume that it's really easy to use, whereas yeah. it only takes an inexperienced user to be playing with it in, in front of you where you suddenly realize, oh, actually, do you know what? It's not that straightforward. I think this is a crucial thing. I think having some kind of training bolted into your offering just nowadays seems like a no-brainer if you're not doing it i guess they're going to be asking why yeah and I, I guess it's how you come about the last point i made under some assumptions here was the fact that um maybe much of the training needs is decided early on in the brief so if you are going the traditional route maybe what expectations are set there will come out of what they've been asking for because they'll probably come with some need to be able to change this regular ongoing content. Yeah. I always offered it as a part of the the the, the proposal right at the beginning and a part of the contract was that there would be some training. And yeah. my experience, and you may differ, but certainly my experience was that that would mean me literally going to their premises because most of the clients that I had were very, very local to me and, you know, a short car journey and I was there. So it was a question of getting in a car, going with my computer and literally fielding questions. You know, if they didn't have any questions, I would just show them how to how to edit things. But it was yeah. built in. The, the reason I'm mentioning all that is because it was built in. I, I would offer that at the beginning, but it, there was never a sort of commoditized package that I would send forward with you know pre-made videos and all everything clearly thought out it really was on the hoof a bit I was trying to figure out for them from their questions what it was that they wanted me to show them during the training session and and often it didn't even happen you know I'd ask them if they wanted me to come in and they'd say no it's all right we'll we'll figure it out and we'll email you if we've got a problem mm. it's it's kind of nice I like that I like the fact that you can just have that 
face-to-face contact. I just don't have that at all no. since I've really been doing it. That's right. And also, I, my experience is limited here because effectively I offloaded that to the person who gave me the work. She was really the, the design and the client end when I first got clients and I was on the implementing what they wanted. So she largely had to deal with making sure that their training was there. So I'm yeah. very limited. Also, it is, it's a skill, isn't it? Being able to teach things is a is a real bona fide skill and yeah. it requires you to be fairly outgoing to have an understanding of how deep you need to go in and you know you might need to do things multiple times and repeat things over and over again and determine whether or not your yeah you know, your, your client is capable of taking this in or whether or not you need to go more slowly there's a yeah. there's a lot in here and so just sort of saying oh training you know p- t- people train for a long time to be good trainers and yeah. so it's not something necessarily that's in everybody's wheelhouse. There may be a bunch of people listening to this who think, I am literally never going to do that because it just terrifies me. Because it is quite a scary yeah. thing standing up in front of people, especially if it's a like a whole room full of people. You've built a big website for a big company and there's going to be 15 people editing it and they're all in the room mm. and you've got to stand there and give a cogent explanation of how it all works and make sure that they understand and possibly go round and help them. Boy, mm. there's more to this than meets the eye. Indeed. Let's talk about, about our different approaches, agile and traditional. In some ways, I, this is why I've moved agile part of this. It's just a way of dealing with it. But let's try and distinguish what I think is different. So the traditional uh, approach would probably see training as this likely separate event uh, yeah. where I think agile... Yeah probably sidesteps it slightly because the idea there with this ongoing iterative approaches is that you work through a small self-determining team who work closely together and no one has um, exact roles as such. Obviously, everybody has their own expertise and people were probably not likely to be able to tread on their toes, but otherwise everybody, no one should be the expert. Everybody should be able to kind of help each other to solve the immediate problems, which are always you know, small things at a time slowly being put out. So I think, you know, from that point of view, assuming that you're working with the same person, in my case, trying to go agile would be the same client, you're going to build up naturally um, a sort of understanding of what they can and can't do. So, you know, just the process of, say, trying to get copy together for your website, trying to do that together as a collaborative thing, you get a real good insight. Yeah, to, your approach, your yeah. approach is almost like it's training the entire time, uh, apart yeah. from the bit prior to when you've actually agreed that you're going to build a website together, where there's no yeah. training. But the moment that you're putting anything on a on a page, you're doing it together. So you're sort of training the person how to do it all at the same time. So it's just this constant journey of training. And yeah, so yeah. the idea would be really when the website is in a is in a state that's that it's fit to to call let's let's just use the word finished. I know you probably wouldn't ever think that it is finished, but let's let's imagine yeah. there is a moment where you think that's now a functioning website. The training's all done. Whereas for me, the training is very much a moment in time. You know, the client basically is not seeing WordPress at all at any point until that training session so it's going to be a moment in time it's going to be booked into the calendar we're going to have a location which is typically their office but i'm imagining more and more it might be a zoom call um and i'm going to have to go with some ideas field their questions but if they've got no questions be be ready to give them things that they can do and try out and fail at and and so they're completely different i would say yours is ongoing iterative mine is a moment in time bound by location and the amount of hours i'm going to dedicate to it and there's a kind of philosophy as well in this for the agile because you know it's a a two-way learning the idea of having working closely with the client is the client brings in knowledge which the person building the application will not know about the business so it's always no one is effectively training somebody else there isn't a power position in within that right. setup yeah. you know that's the kind of idea behind it and i think some sometimes if i hear the word if somebody tells me i'm going to get training on it there's a little bit of me that goes what <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> who, who said i want to be yeah. trained yeah. by you <laughs> the, the curious thing about this is it's not like well okay so take the example of our lawyer yeah yeah um, i think my training brief there would be really small 
in that yeah. it would, in many cases, I'm assuming the only things they're going to want to change is things on the pages which already exist. So for me, that would be an educational experience where they, let's say we're using a page builder where I'm just saying, okay, this is where you go to log in. You, once you've logged in, you want to click this button there. You're into what we're going to call the page builder. And so now you click on this and here's where you modify it. Don't forget to click publish or save or whatever at the end. And then you're backing out. And that's kind of probably the limitations of what they're going to do. But I'm yeah. guessing, you know, if it's a if it's a WooCommerce store or if it's something a little bit more complicated with dynamic data, there's going to be quite a lot to take in. And yeah. getting the process right is is so straightforward to you and I because we've done it a billion times. Yeah. But my my experience was always that they would nod and smile and say, "Yes, I've understood it." But <laughs> you own it's only really later when they start to phone you up and say, "Can you tell me how to do that thing again?" <laughs> that you realize that you've probably given them a hundred little things to do in the correct order. And if any one of those hundred little things is is incorrectly remembered or just forgotten, you can't do it. You know, just yeah. like URL to log in, username, password, then click on this link, then go over here, click this. No, not that. Click that bit, then go to this box. Don't forget to click save and then to log out. I mean, just right there, just changing one yeah. thing on a page builder has probably required 10 steps to be done accurately. And they're, they're always, always, always forgotten in, my, uh, in yeah. my experience. And I think that's one of the issues with the um, kind of end of project, the traditional approach where you end it, because then that's your kind of maybe just after it's your training session. Yep. But in reality maybe work to the client up to that point where they're kind of a bit sick of talking about the website and they they don't do anything for a while so all that training that you taught them yes on day two of the site being live they probably don't get around to getting interested in the site again for another six months and everything taught then has well gone out yeah because we obsess don't we we obsess about websites and we like to tweak yeah. and we go in and we fiddle all the time yeah. my experience was broadly that once i handed it over it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be looked at probably. And if forms started to come in, then the content of those mm. forms would be looked at. Mm. But the, the website itself would just be, right, it's done. We can forget about that. We've got other things to move on to. We've got other business objectives. So you're right. I think it just gets forgotten. And so the the, the hundred steps that you gave them uh, has mm. gone. And then six months from now, they can't even locate the the training materials that they wrote down or that you wrote down for them. And so mm. the phone rings and... And in in some ways, there's a piece of me which kind of likes that because at least you've, you're reestablishing contact. If yeah. it's um, if it's a website which they never ever ever edit again, you are going to lose that contact. And so when the when the the need to rebuild or redesign or fiddle with the website in some way comes along, you're just going to be vying for that work again. Whereas if yeah. they are, you know, they're forgetting how to do things, so they're going to call you up and. You know, you're re-establishing those bonds every once in a while. So it's not all bad, is it, if things no. go wrong? Because at least you get a touch point. Yeah. And, and my limited experience of Agile anyway, sort of because everything stops, we'd get something out and then, you know, it's not an ongoing process because they just get on with their lives and do other things. And right. Other bits. But it's nice to be able to kind of, it, at least with that system, I can prompt them to, should we just do a, another little bit of work to just, move forward a bit you yeah know? <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah and and you are also you're you're constantly thinking about where the website could go because that's the approach you're taking whereas yeah. there is a bit for me where it's it's no it's kind of forgotten about for me you know if they don't call me for six months yeah there's no bit of me realistically which is just going to go and check if they've modified the website in any way or make suggestions i'm just too busy working on the next project yeah here's the thing this is really, I guess, at the heart of um, why I want to talk about this particularly um, is the fact that when we get into does the client need or want training? Because there are, um, let's let's take our lawyer. So, you know, as you've pointed out before, she's going to be paid quite well by the hour. So chances are that she might not want to spend her time with this web malarkey and would probably be a lot cheaper for us to get us to change what she needs. Do you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, I, but, I think so. And that again, that was my expectation. It was far, it was far more likely that I would get the call asking yeah. me if I can change it than that the call was, can you show me how to change it? Because okay. you know, if you think about the lawyer, very busy. I mean, probably 
fantastically busy. I've got several lawyer mm. friends and they're all incredibly overworked. And if you think about it, if, if it takes the same amount of time to write the email or to have the conversation telling me to do something <laughs> yeah. as it takes to, to ask for them to be taught to do it. But of course, if they've then got to be taught to do it, they've got to make space in their day to relearn it. And if it's just something modest, you know, like actually we've changed our telephone number, um, I think it's just way easier for them to say, Nathan, can you just change the phone number on the site, please? Uh, rather yeah. than actually, Nathan, can we book in a meeting and, I, you know, come into the office and we'll spend 10 minutes and you can show me how to change the telephone number. That is not typically what happened. It was more, Nathan, can you just do it? So training really was not mostly needed, I don't think. Yeah. I was just trying to imagine the kind of scenarios that have been happening with me. So you might, you know, we might from the beginning know that they say probably a live beta want to do it, we'll do that. And we've set it up. But what I found and imagine in her situation, six months later, she's grown a bit. She's got a new assistant. She's given them the job of sorting out the marketing. So she says, I'm going to introduce you to my new marketing person. And they come in and then suddenly it's almost the same as what you've got with new management. You've got somebody in there who you've got to train, yeah. who yeah. probably has a role where they think, what they should be doing with the website is, you know, it, it's kind of their decision. Um, it, do you know what I mean? It becomes I a very do. awkward situation. This happens with- This happens a, a lot, actually, doesn't it? In that somebody comes in and because it's their role to yeah. to affect the business, one of the quickest ways to do that is to, is to like, update the website. And yeah. I actually lost quite a few clients during that changeover. You know, mm. I'd done nothing wrong. We had a perfectly great relationship, but the personnel changed. And suddenly mm. I basically had to start again. And so, you know, you'd get the phone call. Can you come into the office? We just want to have a chat about the website. And then, you know, six weeks later, you find out they've gone to somebody else because the rapport and all of that had completely gone. And you were yeah. basically starting over. And that person who's replaced them just wanted fresh, fresh perspective. And so it went out for tender again. Yeah, that, that's that's a really crucial moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I haven't to sort of deal with that. I, I've had to deal with it before, but when somebody changes over and you have to yep. kind of train that person because they don't know how to do what they want to do, but also trying to reset boundaries, which you thought were already set on this website, you know, yep. with with the person you built it for. But also there are other things, you know, where I think just things change over time. So, uh, you know, let's say they get into publishing articles and they think, well, well I've got a site, I want to put them on my blog, you know, yeah, again, yeah. Yeah, a new batch of training that might go directly to Miss A. Um, you know, I t- really all I wanted to talk about was the fact that I'm suddenly getting surprised all the time by how the training needs is, are changing. And with what we mentioned before about the expectation about what people can add to their sites, e-commerce, booking systems, again, they come with a whole batch of training needs. Yeah, I, I wonder what the the level of expectation from the clients is as well when they're acquiring the services of somebody building a website. I wonder how how professional yeah. they're expecting the website training to be. You know, mm. if I was getting a website done for my cottage industry new startup business, I probably mm. wouldn't have too much in the way of expectations. I, I really probably would be expecting somebody from the company to show up, possibly. Uh, in the room with me and spend half an hour just showing me how to do it and I would make some brief notes. But I wonder, the, the professionalization of almost every aspect of life, I wonder if they are literally expecting, you know, like a full day with coffee breaks and lunch in the middle <laughs> and, you know, PowerPoint yeah. presentations and, the you know, and, and ancillary trainers who can go around and mop up everybody's problems as and when they happen. Um, I wonder. I, I don't. I. I don't know. I guess. I guess that would be an interesting question to start with, wouldn't it? Right at the beginning of the project, do you have training needs around this, mm. or are you happy to sort of bump into problems and we'll fix them as they go? I mean, it's moot for you because you're going to be working hand in hand. But for me, I wonder. I wonder if you know there's a, there's a there's a better way of offering the training, or indeed the training could be an additional bolt on service you know if you pay us mm. x amount of money we'll go this deep into it but if you just want something a bit more hands off and you know it, there's a lot of expectation of you to remember things or write things down we can probably do it in an hour uh, over zoom I, I don't know it's interesting i don't know what the expectation would be nowadays yeah and um 
It's interesting because I've actually got a product on my site still that's up there that's like a half day training, which right. I kept there much more when I was thinking about I handed it over and they could use the page builder and they might want to learn that stuff and no one's ever taken me up on it so yeah. far. Okay, well, that's interesting in and of itself, isn't it? The, the idea yeah. of training is not is not appealing because nobody's nobody's yeah, sort of phoned yeah. you up and said actually can we avail ourselves of that training yeah interesting yes they want to do stuff and effectively they want somebody to just answer their questions because i think that's i i've got you know it this is the balance i find quite tricky so one of my clients came to me at, Essentially, I think they only came to me to build the website because what they thought they wanted was a much more complex booking system. And the one that they showed me was a WordPress one, which would be complex, lots of complex third party plugins to rebuild what I thought she wanted. By the end of the conversation, we realized that wasn't the first thing she needed. It was very secondary. But if I'd have gone with that, I very much realized as I got to know her that she just wouldn't have been able to cope with what I'd built. Um, right, right. It's, it, you know, it, it, well, what I'm saying is that the what she would have needed to have learned is not what she's got the time for or the interest in learning, and she didn't need it as much as she thought she had. So I've got it that way, and then I've got, also got the other way where I feel there are lots of people out there who have got very interested in building websites. They feel they could do it now. It's within their capability. So that's going on at the same time where people are, you know, going beyond what I would expect people would normally have done before. I wonder if it's harder to teach WordPress now than it was, say, 10 years ago, because you imagine this scenario 10 years ago, you, you probably would have built the, you would have constructed a theme in some way, yeah. you, you either built your own theme or you would have bought a theme and you'd probably have plugged in uh, fields and advanced custom fields or something equivalent to that and you know the data would have gone in the back end and you would have explained where the data goes and how to save it and so on and there was a real separation between the the data the content on the WordPress admin side and then it's presented on the front end and yeah. look if you save it over here here it is over here now although for you and I using a page builder is dead simple and it made those jobs much more straightforward you know you could throw together a website in a, in a matter of hours if you were really good yeah. at it that's only true because we've used it over and over and over again i think it's more complicated potentially for a client to be faced with the page builder and all the myriad settings <laughs> than it may have been just with the separation wordpress admin that's separate there's your presentation there's your data there's your presentation than it is now and it, i always found it fascinating people i would watch them use in my case it was beaver builder mm -hmm. and i would i would just sort of say right now you try and the amount of mistakes that, that were potential to be made which were made no no not, not that bit try clicking on that okay now now go over there and edit over there. it was just more complicated with the page builder so i, I don't know if we've made life e life easier for the clients with page builders in the end. Yeah, I don't know, but I do feel there's an expect, it's one of the strangest things is, but then it does, maybe it's just that kind of, I forgot what it's called now, that um, theory where people don't know their own abilities, if you like. So it's often the people, if you like, who are least interested in the web, in my yes. experience, uh, and don't want to get into that, who are quite blase about going in and as one did, you know, kind of rip out their main call to action, just deleted it <laughs> without an awareness that they just kind of killed the, the, the whole function of their website, you know. Wow. And, and it, it's one of these kind of weird things where, it's really hard to judge. Hey, let's can we talk about just something? Because there are kind of two routes you can go, and and I hear people do um, to take either of these routes. So you could go with the I'm going to restrict the client into only fields that they can fill in. Um, yeah, according to their brief. Yeah, and then you've got the opposite, which I was in that camp previously but i'm tightening up a bit where it was a bit like i built the site with your cms with a page builder that's a benefit for you okay i'm going to train you and then you can go and do what you like so <sighs> how do we how do we fall on this yeah i don't really know i i guess the 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 great appeal of being able to lock things down is that you are insuring yourself against yeah. client failure and i think in that scenario you are basically hoping that the client is unable to cock things up. You know, they're unable to go in and cause a <laughs> yeah. catastrophe and save something which they didn't intend to save. But 
on the other hand, um, I guess giving them the ability to do everything is potentially opening that up just really wide because you and I both know it's so easy to make mistakes. You've probably, in error, by accident, somehow saved something that you didn't yeah. intend to save and you've been doing this for years and years and years. I, I think the capability, especially with things like Gutenberg with block locking and there was that great Beaver Builder plugin um, called Wallace in Line, which enabled you yes. to do this kind of thing. I don't I don't know. I, I think as a client, I I would probably just want to be led on that, you know, but there again, there could be a conversation there, couldn't there? Do you want to have full control? And if you do, <laughs> you have to realize that, you know, mopping up those mistakes may be costly. Or do you want me to just lock things down so that the the likelihood of making mistakes is much less, saves you a bit of time, but you're not going to be in control of everything. I, I think you just have to see what their what their persona was like and just offer them that opportunity. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you've got, I mean, obviously you've got to accommodate the client else you've got no business, but yeah. uh, um, I, I do think, you know, it's, it's interesting because when we started this off and uh, I had somebody else get in the work for me what she did she always used to offer them because she used to do html and then she were offering wordpress via me so she would ask them the question do they want one where they can edit the content themselves and that was the trigger the yes answer to that was i'm coming in to do the wordpress with her and it's interesting because no one ever answered no <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. but but almost none of those did their own updates themselves they still got her to do it so it was a win-win for her in a way saying that because effectively it made it easy for her to do the updates on their behalf yeah um, they still came into her so it was, it was an interesting thing and i just think it's still the same with this because i've been on both sides of this so one job that i got was somebody who did a really good job at building out all these acf fields to uh, you know there's a section so they couldn't really make a mistake to fill out different pages and and different custom post types absolutely there but you could see this has grown over the years and this person wasn't available so i got the job to remove it and get it back to the page builder which at this point you realize that heck all these fields that were being helpful and rest restrictive were now just completely pointless because the business has slowly changed bit by bit over time. Yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? It's what's also kind of interesting is that quite a lot of my clients really genuinely expressed the desire not to be able to edit anything. You know, they really didn't want to have that trouble. Um, um, you know, they 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 wore their let's say Luddite badge with pride, if you know <laughs> what I mean. You know, and right at the yeah, beginning, yeah. I explained that I was going to use WordPress or the equivalent whatever I was using at the time and they said no that's that's your domain but I feel that's changing you know these tools being advertised on the telly that you can make your own website and have it done in a few moments it's uh it's I think that that is changing over time yeah I, I wish I had the answer to this but I think more and more it would be about getting in there and asking those questions and seeing what the client had in in terms but like you say, I reckon everybody, given the given the question, do you want to be able to edit your website, yes or no, yes. that everybody's going to say yes, right? It's just that's what they're <laughs> yeah. going to say. Yeah. But they, I mean, I guess they didn't say, you know, is that going to affect the price? They just sort of went for yes. And it, yeah. was, it was interesting at that time, but they were mostly cautious. One, one thing that I did notice, and I think it's something that I'm now trying to prepare for. I've been one client who I've done numerous sites for um, over a period of time has, I think, um, progressed. Uh, they, they <laughs> they've turned into web designer because the tools have been there to allow them. So each time they've pushed themselves a little bit further uh -huh. and they've done it quite well. But the danger is that also in their department, they've kind of led, if you like, they set the trend <laughs> yes. on doing more and more. And I think, you know, now I think, well, I have to have a conversation about because they're doing stuff which they don't know is maybe potentially harmful. So uh, that's one of the things which I've, I feel I've, I, I will do with agile approaches, feel I need to prepare for. Yeah. And I guess you don't need to worry if you're traditional because effectively if they mess it up, then they have to pay for you to come and do that. But they just may not know they've messed it up. Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because in, like, like we were talking about earlier, you know, if they if they do mess things up, you are creating that that um, that future business. You are giving yourself the opportunity to be back in touch with them. Whereas if you do a really fabulous job of training them, 
you are in a sense saying, right, you no longer need me. Um, yeah. You know, off you go. You can do. I, I don't know. I think this is really tricky. I think I think it's going to change on a per client basis. I don't think yeah. there's going to be yeah. one size that fits all. This client over here might want training, but they only want half an hour. This client over yeah. here might want yeah. no training. They just want to be, you know, told over the phone how to do it, and they'll figure it out themselves. I guess I guess it's different in each and every in each and every case. The only thing that I would say about the the you know if they mess it up then it's new business for you. But in my experience, most of what they mess up, they won't see they've messed it up. That's a good it's, point. Yep. And and that's that's one of the most frustrations. But you got they've done that. They just don't see it. You know, it doesn't work on mobiles or whatever. Or it's it's more subtle. It's something to do with SEO that's impacting on that or something. You know. And I think yeah, that's but really why I, I guess I've changed my approach. You're a, we... You told me a little story uh, just before you hit record about the fact that you've got a, you've got a tool, which is a SaaS app, which oh, kind yeah. of keeps monitoring uh, visual changes. <laughs> I know the SaaS app can do all sorts of things, can't it? It can monitor the HTML and it can monitor all sorts. But in some cases, you're just looking to see if anything's changed um, and then yeah, you get we... an alert. So yeah, we... you were able to determine that the, the person who'd taken their call to action off the page you see i would i didn't have any of those tools i now do have but i don't really deploy them but i do think that's yeah. quite an interesting strategy just keeping an eye on the uh, keeping an eye with software on the website to see if they've uh, removed anything perhaps by accident yeah it is great although as you pointed out as well because you know the software it does give you a, a fair number of false alerts and it's quite easy then to start ignoring <laughs> yes the messages that come in but yeah. yeah in this case it was good you know within 12 hours because i've said it twice a day to go and look at various different pages you know something came in you thought no that's definitely wrong <laughs> yeah but you can you can modify it can't you in such a way that yeah. it, uh, oh, if if anything less than 10 percent of a given yes. page or a portion of a page has changed it won't alert you or it could be 50 percent and and so in, in yeah. that way you are able to at least have some granular control over it um mm. here's a question what sort of tools do you use because back in the day uh, mm. you know, if you're going back 10, 12 years, video on the internet was still not really a thing. You know, it, it would have taken me a lot of effort to throw together a tutorial, a video tutorial, and then somehow get that to the client. But nowadays mm. with software like Loom, and I use one called Cloud App, which I know you use, mm -hmm. it's just sitting in the sitting on my computer. It's there waiting to be used. I click a button, and within <laughs> within literally two seconds... I can start making a video. And, and for me, that seems like the strategy that I would adopt. Yeah. That is to say, I would be reactive and I would wait for the problems to emerge. And then I would just do the quick two minute video. Okay, so right, you've forgotten how to change that image over there. Right, I'm going to make you a quick video. I'll have it to you in a couple of minutes. Hold tight. And then I just talk them through it, send them the video. And in that way, I think that's how my training would work now. I'd just be doing little tiny videos as and when they needed to be done. Yeah, that's me. It's really as they need to be done. I think, you know, th there are lots of sort of training courses which I've got links to that I give to clients, you know, one that I pay for, but it or had paid for, but I just, they're not using it. They really, in my, in my experience, they don't go out to go and get training they literally just want to solve problems and that's that's how i have to respond to it yeah so there's videos. there's all sorts of things that you can get there's you know there's yeah. SaaS apps and things like that isn't there where you can go and watch training about wordpress but yeah i i i, I had no i had no feedback to say that anybody ever watched any of that stuff because honestly i wouldn't well, actually, we're next, next time we're talking about this, we are talking a little bit about website documentation and the kind of support stuff that we might need to have in place. So we'll probably get into that a bit more now in, in that uh, episode. But hey, can I just ask you, because maybe we're getting to the end of this, is there stuff <laughs> that clients want, which, you know, training on potentially that has nothing to do with the website, but is sort of related in a oh, techie way. Good Lord. This happened to me so often. Um, are you meaning basically they ask you become a bit like the tech guy for their company? Yeah. Yeah. I got that quite a lot. And when I was starting out, 
And I think a lot of it is a function of how difficult technology was back then. You know, yeah. getting online was was really tricky. Just setting up a modem was tricky. Setting up a router was tricky. Computers used to break in ways that they yeah. just no longer break in. And I I had this a lot. You know, I would go in and set up printers for clients that I'd got. And I'd go in and fi- I one time was logging into their router and trying to figure out how to route packets that came in and all this kind of stuff and and it was i think it was that i didn't just have i hadn't figured out what i was you know i was kind of the internet guy and part of the internet was the routers if that client came to me now it's very likely i would say do you know what i think you probably want to phone up well in in my case there's a company i I won't name them but there's a company and i would immediately go just go to them because they've got all of that in hand because that's not my area of expertise and i'd probably couch it like that just say I'm more likely to waste time doing it than if you go to them. And I know that they're not going to try and steal my website business because that's not what they do anyway. So it seems like a perfect a marriage made in heaven. I'm I'm getting them yeah. some business at the same time. But yeah, it happened quite a lot. But now I, I know, I, I know what it was that, you know, I know what the, the, the boundaries of building a website should be now. So very unlikely I'd fall into that trap. Mm, I think what about I've you? Broke. Yeah, I think I've gone... A- bit in reverse on that because I would be quite hard I, I kept out of any additions but I as I've tried to get more working with the client on an ongoing basis I realize I have to sort of get into this so things like emails come into it like one of yeah. my clients so she knows she needed a new email address for the the she wanted the domain name one but she you knows she's just been picking up a, a gmail and a hotmail account the separate things you know she hasn't got a client on a computer so you end up thinking yep. i really do need you to know about this and help you with that kind of stuff you know yeah. and it just to to move forward even things like you want them to set up um for local seo you want them to go in and create a google my business and you feel like you end up having to get into things which are nothing to do with the website just naturally because you want the website to have a better chance of succeeding. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I, I kind of feel almost like email is in is in yeah. bound a bit. Yes. Sorry, within the boundaries of what we would do. Yeah, that's curious because it really isn't the website. But obviously, if you've got forms and they have no ability to set up the you know, the, the email account which will receive those forms. I think there's got to be a bit of that in there, haven't there? There's got to be a bit of give and take. I mean, it's not it's not strictly the website, but it, it is part of it. I, I, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. you've made it difficult there. I think because I know email fairly, I, I know that I could pull that off within a, a matter of minutes. It wouldn't really bother me. But if it was something mm. brand new, like a, I don't know, I, I want you to make it so that all the contact forms go into this particular CRM that I've never used before and all that. Maybe at that point, I'm starting to get a bit concerned. Yeah, I just think, I don't think we can escape a lot of the stuff because even if you're traditional and you say, okay, I want the content delivered before I work. Now you could be really hard nosed about that and say, if you don't get it, you failed and you get, you know, penalized financially for that. But, you know, Really, we have to kind of work with the clients, to, even if you're going traditional and you're hard on this one. So you end up possibly getting into image manipulation and copywriting and all those sorts of stuff yeah, anyway. Yeah. And it's really outside of the traditional uh, view of what a website should be about or what yeah. a web designer does. So but, I, I, yeah, I, mm. I think the, the the difficult thing is once you've become the tech guy, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to not be the tech guy. You know, if you have come and fixed the printers and you have. Uh, enable their email and all that then you've kind of set your stall out a bit haven't you and it's going to be difficult yeah. to walk that back and say actually sorry I, I crossed the boundaries before and I shouldn't have done it but I did it because I was trying to be helpful um, if you're clear at the beginning with all of that maybe that's maybe that's the best way to go just be, just be sure that you you know what your boundaries are and, and I didn't because I was making the job up as I went along as well, most of yeah. us were I think yeah I think you still are and I, I I'm almost embracing that in a way with the kind of agile because at least i know i've got a a philosophy for why it's kind of this ongoing because it's part of the relationship growing as well so yeah i'm quite keen to stick at the center of things so if they see me as the the tech guy or the person who does stuff way beyond what i really do i don't mind i think i'd rather them come to me just so i can hold on to that that sort of central role of being their main uh, consultant, if you like, over their future. That's right. Online. That is right. Because 
If and even if all you're doing is acting as an interface to to distribute yes. the work to other people, at yes. least you are at the fulcrum. Whereas yeah. if they're you know, if they I mean, printers, well, we won't. No, we we won't ask Nathan to do that. You never know who's going to walk through the door and <laughs> beguile them with their their web design skills. So, yeah, exactly. I, th- I think you're right. I think it's probably good to nurture those relationships and be the be the center of it all, even if you're not executing the work yourself. That's it. And then, and for the reason, because I think there are just so many more people who believe they can build web designs or do it uh, do web design sorry build uh, websites because they do it in their spare time so you know i think we're under threat more than we've ever been yeah and given the given the economic climate at the moment i'm imagining yeah. that um ancillary things things yeah. like care plans and all of that all of that i think will be under the microscope more than ever um in the last 20 years so it's time perhaps to be a little bit more flexible and a little bit more accommodating and exactly. be, the, be the person that can offer all of these solutions and offer the support and offer the training and all of those kind of things because it may be that just keeping your clients is going to be the toughest job that you've got over the next three or four years. It could be. Yes, I'll fix your printer. That's way, right. Yeah. your windows. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whilst whilst I'm here, yeah, I can buff your buff your shoes if you like. That's no problem. <laughs> uh, anyway, so next time we'll we'll talk about this. Could be a bit boring, so we might make it short. Web, website documentation. Oh yeah, documentation. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Do you know what? I think that there's more to this than meets the eye. Um, okay. So I I think there's there's a discussion to be had. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Lovely. All right. Bye. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. Always a great pleasure to chat to David Wormsley about these bits and pieces. If you do the process of giving some training materials over to your clients, if you do it differently to any of the things that David and I described, well, it'd be lovely to hear from you. Head over to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number 293 and leave us a comment there. Alternatively, go to our Facebook group, wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook, and you could write a comment in the thread there. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place. Invoice clients and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by going to go.me forward slash WP builds. And we really do thank GoDaddy Pro for their continued support of the WP builds podcast. Okay, we'll be back next Thursday. That'll be a podcast episode, which is an interview, but we'll also possibly be back on Monday. There might be a little bit of a hiatus in the This Week in WordPress show because I may or may not, haven't quite decided yet, take a week's holiday. So we'll see how that goes. But hopefully we'll be back in your podcast feed very, very soon. Okay, all that remains for me to do is to say, have a good week, stay safe. Bye-bye for now. Cheesy music, fading in.